Well, hello, Crash Running Podcast, and today is a podcast dedicated to the Owl Sock event that took place last Sunday at the Night Owl. Well, today I'll get talking to the Die Breakers, Liam McEwen, and Ryan Sparrow, um, three original musicians that were playing at the Owl Sock event. There was two other bands, which were tribute bands, and one was a Jimi Hendrix tribute and from what I heard, he was brilliant. But unfortunately, I couldn't be there for that um, set. And um, there was a tribute for The Who, and I actually really enjoyed them, and I'm going to be playing some footage of their set in a bit later on in the podcast. Um, the Die Breakers were absolutely brilliant. Um, they performed some tracks out of the Muddy Waters Electric album, so we get talking about that later on. And we get talking about Owlstock. With all the musicians today, we get talking about Owlstock, but then we talk a bit about their work, what they do, and stuff like that. And yeah, it was a um, really good podcast, and it was great talking to these artists, and yeah, and hopefully cross paths with them in the future. So I'm going to start the podcast off with Ross, one of the organisers of Owlstock, and we'll get talking about where the idea of Owlstock and stuff like that come about. Then following that will be the interviews with the musicians. So hope you all enjoy the podcast. And just before I go, I want to say thank you to Mazzy Snipe and Ross Carley, the organisers of Owlstock, for thinking of me um, for doing like a podcast on the event like i really appreciate them asking me and i'm always happy to like do like vlog slash interviews and that at events so if there's anyone out there that's got an event coming up they want press or something like that um ask me i'll give me a text on that and i'll sort something out so i'm gonna hand it over to the podcast and i'll see you all later take care and stay tuned for the next podcast and that will be with Bad Girlfriend at Kaleidoscope. So, how did the idea of Alstock come about? Hey man. Uh, so, Alstock came about uh, for the 50th anniversary back in 2019. Obviously, it was like 50 years since 1969, like the iconic Woodstock. Um, so, Alstock was kind of born out of that love for that era and that kind of um, event. I um, wanted to try and, try and replicate something similar, go for the same sort of vibes. Um, you know, we obviously had uh, Woodstock inspired artists, uh, visuals, kind of sort of food, uh, everything like that, face painting and just trying to have fun with it really. Um, so it was obviously, it was sort of came from the Night Owl. Um, it was kind of the Night Owl came up with the idea, it wasn't like an outside uh, promoter. Um, and I think the Woodstock theme, I think obviously being like a soul and retro bar, like the retro theme, just it was just there straight away, like 50 years of Woodstock. It, just, it was so obvious, it was such a good idea to do at the time. I actually wasn't there uh, for that one. I didn't join the team until last year. Um, so I did a little bit of work on the uh, 2021 Woodstock, uh, Owlstock, sorry. Uh, and then was a big part on helping on this one, which was really fun. Um, so it's actually the um, the third Owlstock uh, because we had one, obviously we had the 2019 and then we had COVID and then we had one last year and yeah. And then we had this year's, which was brilliant really good fun obviously I think yeah we want to keep it as an annual event so hopefully we'll be doing this again next year and it'll be bigger and better than ever
So my name is uh, Ryan Sparrow and uh, this is my beautiful band, this is Mr. Richie Kumar on the bass and Mr. Jack Cheese Ensor on the drums. <laughs> right. This is a track called Hope. with the interviews just want to say with the live performances sorry for the muffling sound um something wrong with the mic on the camera sorry well hello crashing in podcast and today we're at owl stock at the night owl and right now i'm with ryan sparrow hello 
ladies and gentlemen, of the Crashing In podcast. <laughs> so how are you today, mate? I'm good, mate, to be fair. Good, good, good man. Good. And um, do you want to talk a bit about Owlstock and sports on it and how did, that, how did this gig come about yeah, for you? Yeah, it, it was a bit of a weird one, like... I was uh, in like a two-piece blues rock band. Yeah. And then we, we ended up just parting ways just while working. So I was like, I messaged Ross. I was like saying, could we swap over? And I was like, he was like, sound, yeah. yeah. So it's been a great event so far. Like we've, we've been here since like 12. It's, yeah, yeah. It's been, it's been a good laugh. Sure, like, there's a volume, look. So uh, are you into like that Woodstock stuff, like psych stuff and all Mate, that? Look, the thing that got me is obviously because the, po- the uh, Netflix series has just come out, innit? Oh, what? The, what was it not? It was the Woodstock Woods- 99 one. Have you watched it? Nah, like? not yet. Like, I, I know it's on, but like, yeah, mate, we're like Woodstock. It's like, it's where it started, isn't it? Like, yeah, man. I like, wish we could live those days, though, in the uh, like 60s and stuff like that, man. So let's talk a bit about you and let's talk about how did you like get into music and who was it in your life that got you into music? Okay, so like mainly it was like my dad. My dad played guitar and we're both left handed, so oh, he, he, his was the only guitar I could play. And then my granddad used to be a drummer in the sixties and everything and then we kinda of just picked it up from there. Like. Oh, cool. I, grew up, I grew up on like Pink Floyd and stuff, so it was like kind of tra- channeling that into what we do now it's yeah. loads of reverb it's your life basically <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that's what tends to happen like when you've got family like, like play m- instruments being in bands yeah. that kind of passes down doesn't right. it like 100% like dad, my dad to this day is probably one of the best things I know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he's better than me like, <laughs> do you know what I mean so, but he was in a, like a little cover band when I was like a teenager cool. so yeah but well, that's where it tends to start I know it's from most bands it starts off with covers and yeah, then it right, works yeah. its way up and stuff so, like that I used to play a lot of acoustic gigs and then yeah, that was yeah. it and then just started writing and stuff and then went from there like. cool man so like let's talk about your material and stuff like that you recently had a track that came out in January yeah. to, to know was it to know yeah, yeah. To know, yeah. so you, do you want to talk about that and yeah man look. How, do, how do people take it and stuff yeah it's like a, it, it is we've had that track for like four years mm. so like when you're there like sat on a track for that long we were kind of like we, we need to get it out and then we just recorded it at Tom Tom used to play guitar for me and uh, we recorded at his house he mixed it and everything and then yeah, yeah. we just like sounds put it out see, see how it does and it did great like, the reaction was great like right. the fact that we because I, I used to like always put like I don't know what it is like I, I went through phases like, so I kind of did a thing for the one and I was like that ain't working and then yeah. it always harped back to what I'm doing now so yeah. I was like well, I might as well stick at that do you know what I mean yeah. like, but like, what was the recording process like and stuff like that it was good we did it in like two days oh, man. Like, and it was like the first time we'd actually worked in that sort of sense because we were quite not, not lazy but we're like, we weren't as committed yeah. as we were we're like, we used to just get in a studio and just record and then however it turned out that was it we actually took time with it yeah, and yeah. It come, it's come out great like, and do you want to talk about it lyric wise or is that personal nah, 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 mate lyr- lyrically it was a it's kind of it was a song for my girlfriend so it, it sounds because it's in a depressing setting <laughs> it sounds like a negative song but it's really not a negative yeah, song yeah. so like, I'm lucky because like, obviously I'm trying to do music and my girlfriend's got her own like yeah. path as well but, we support each other and it's kind of about that to be honest like, sometimes that well as the bands do that like, probably like Joy Division do quite happy songs but then yeah, yeah, really they're depressing they're, yeah, sounds yeah. and stuff just like the that. opposite yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I just like, do the depressing sounds with the like fucking happy lyrics so. would, would you say like the music you listened to in the past like is by what you played yeah and, like, 100% like, the guitar style was like 100% Ben Howard <laughs> John Martin <laughs> <laughs> Show off, man. yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, percent Ben Howard and like John Martin and all kinds of stuff like yeah, yeah, yeah. Pink Floyd again. Like Dave Gilmore was incredible. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Are Dave. you into like the Sid Barrett, Pink Floyd, or? <laughs> <Dick Yeah. it. laughs> but yeah, Sid, are you into like Sid Barrett, Pink Floyd, or anything like that? See, see I just kind of had Dark Side of Me, and I'm repeat. Yeah. And then yeah. that kind of like dragged me down a wormhole and I was like, <laughs> I was like right I'm in this now do you yeah, know what I mean like, yeah. and then I ended up listening to like David Gilmore's solo stuff and then just got into it I never actually listened to David Gilmore's solo it's so really like. good it is really surpri- like, it sounds a bit awesome surprisingly, but surprisingly good yeah yeah like, especially because he ain't got the best voice has because he, with solo stuff like, that's when you go oh, right. yeah yeah I was worried my yeah. dad bought it, bought it on CD that's how long ago it was <laughs> actually using a CD yeah. but then uh, we put it on the car we sat and listened to it with like Wow, it's yeah. actually got power. Like, it was good. Is it eye opening? But with me, it was like Sid Barrett stuff I started with, yeah, yeah. and I followed. Well, obviously, I had Matt Kaplan and this other album. I don't know what it was called now. That was the stuff I was into. Then I kind of get into the seventies, but then I can't get further than yeah. Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah, it's a weird one. Like some, like some of the albums. I'm not going to lie. Oh shit! Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, but like, I mean, probably what is it called? Brick 
brick in the wall or what? Yeah. What is it no, called? No, is it brick in the wall or? It's uh, another brick in the wall. Isn't it? Yeah. That's a, even all the all the animal themed ones. Yeah, yeah. I weren't keen on them to be honest. Like. It ain't, it ain't for me, mate. So like with your music, have you got anything upcoming or in the process of recording stuff like that? I mean, we got we got a beat literally written out plan for next year oh, cool. so like the, through September if you, if you guys want to like, fans to follow me on Instagram and that Raw Inspire Music we're posting videos every three weeks of tracks that are going to come out next year so like strip back versions of tracks that are going to come out next year and we'll start releasing from February we're planning yeah. on releasing every six weeks to two months yeah, so yeah. it's a big plan like yeah. you just got to do it yeah. Yeah. will that like turn into an EP or anything like that like? I'll, I reckon personally I reckon it's going to end up being an album like, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not one for EPs. Like I, I don't know what it is. Like yeah. every time I put singles out, they seem to like hit harder and then yeah. kind of like. But a, a full body of work is like what my music's based around. Yeah, so like yeah. I kind of want to channel that more than anything. Yeah. So we'll see. But like, what's the um, next upcoming gig for you? So we're actually back here on Wednesday. Oh cool! Yeah, yeah, cool. Play, playing back of the bar. Hopefully this will be out before Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. But if not, oh, we're back here Wednesday. Of the bar, yeah. I can't get to that unfortunately because I'm at work. Right. You gotta leave your job. I oh, know, I know. No. It's night shift style as well, so like, it makes it worse. Please don't leave your job. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. There, there's that, and then potentially the Sunflower Lounge on the. I don't know what the day is. Yeah, this yeah. Saturday coming in. Yeah, so, but yeah, like, we definitely geeked up, mate. Oh, definitely yeah. geeked up, so we'll see. That's so, the next one, man. So, like, do you want to talk about like where you can find your music, socials, and stuff like that before we go? Like, so, like, uh, it's all Ryan Sparrow music on Instagram, Facebook, and all that. Spotify is just Ryan Sparrow. Yeah. So yeah, like, just if you're gonna if you're gonna follow, just follow me on Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. don't use Facebook. Yeah, really. yeah. I don't even man. Nah, like, but um, have you got anything to add before we go? Like. Just keep listening to music, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Try try local bands. Like that's that's the one thing I can drill into everyone's head. Try local bands. I usually ask like inspiring crowds, but I think that's inspiring enough, man. Yeah, just try local bands. Yeah, yeah, mate. If you want to, I don't do it. I'm not a very inspiring person, <laughs> so that'll do. Like, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? So. Yeah. And have you got any bands you want to recommend? Shout out, mate. There's loads. Like you've obviously got like the Masses. They're local. The Dharma. The New. Probably now you've told me more. He's gone black. But yeah. there's, mate, there's loads. Yeah, yeah, there's <laughs> just loads, go man. to just go to your local venues. Cool. And just try, yeah. just try something. It's only yeah. five or six yeah. quid to get in. Nice one, yeah. man. So, yeah, so yeah. Fun. That's the good thing about local music stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I can't see the point of paying eighty quid to see the Rolling Stones when you can see the next Rolling Stones. Exactly. Like, yeah. speaking of Rolling Stones, it's Silver Lines. <laughs> yeah. mate, Silver yeah. Lines are great. Silver man. Lines are brilliant. They, they are. They're really good. They've just yeah. come back from New York. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I interviewed them twice now. Like, have you? Yeah, because they had a new EP. And have you heard the EP? I've heard the EP. It's yeah, brilliant, yeah. man. It's, Mate, it's, it's different to their other stuff. Like. But what I love about it is, it, I, I feel like obviously they did their rock and roll stuff. Yeah. But then they've come back with this, and I yeah. feel like it captures their recklessness. I think like, it's good when a band starts off with like the poppier stuff, I guess. Yeah. Then. Work, and then like, they become themselves, yeah. yeah, you know exactly. I mean? They become themselves. So yeah. When I first started, I was an Ed Sheeran tribute app, pretty yeah. much. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> then you kind of find your own path. So yeah, man. Yeah. We all do. Yeah, true. true. But thanks for joining me. Thank you, Robert. Hope you enjoy the rest of the day and see you later. Same. Thank you for having me.
Well, hello, Crash Running Podcast, and I'm with Liam McEwen. Hey, hey, hey. So, um, we're at Owlstock at um, the Night Owl. So, do you want to talk a bit about that? Yeah, so Owlstock, it's um, an event obviously put on by the Night Owl. Trying to look one day of peace, love, and music, um, harking, past the, harking back to the good old heady days of the counterculture 60s hippie vibe come on <laughs> so you want to talk through the tracks you were playing at, um, when you were playing like? yeah so with my solo set like I'll just throw in loads of covers that I like I've just learned over the years so it's like your doors yeah. little bits of Neil Young fucking I like the Neil Young one man yeah, it's a fiery track I like it because of um, Pulp Fiction but then mm. it gives me that vibe <laughs> yeah man and uh yeah so just one of them but it dude like yeah. you know get some moving little white rabbit I learned that this morning to be oh, fair oh mate great tune that is like, like, great cover that was like, yeah, you know the angriest guitarist in the world yeah yeah I like when the first like, track trying to learn the riff like I was yeah. in the living room like <laughs> I think you should just go along with it, man. Like, is that yeah, what you tend to do? Like, I try to, but yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit improv on that. Yeah, like you just play with your mistakes, like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, I like the first track as well, man. Not, who done that's, that one? Uh, that's by a band called the uh, West Coast Pop Art Experimental. Oh, I fucking know that band. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that like. They're from Cali, obviously, but they're fucking so sick. Yeah. Oh, fucking brilliant. Like the tune's called uh, "Child of a Few Hours" is burning to death. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. it's quite, it's very re- relevant now with yeah. all the bombings in Gaza and yeah, the rest of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great track. I'm looking for their records and shit like that. Yeah, it's a rare, it's a rare one. To oh, be. I know. Like, so, so talk about your band, Brian Food, and talk through that. And before the band, what was it that got you into music and that was like? Psych- side of music like to be fair like I was just sitting with my pals once and I seen the guitar in the corner I was like oh, I'll have a little go with that and I started just like picking up doing the weird little crunchy tunes and that and then uh, we all took acid and then uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we just obviously the, the rest is history you know what I mean yeah 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 but yeah so we all just had a bit of a trip and then just thought like, we're into we want to fucking make music that goes with our vibe you know what I mean our yeah. feel so we uh, we started like a little thing called Bad Trip mm. which was uh, it was quite blessed it was our drummer called Joe Mortimer rest in peace he uh, he started the band with us and then we moved on our friend Connor Doyle got involved and then we started Brain Food man yeah 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 and ever since it's uh, been it's been sick to be fair we've got loads of good stuff planned yeah yeah like, um, have you been doing stuff recently with Brain Food or we just recorded at the moment yeah so yeah in the studio still um, trying to lay down some tracks and that yeah pretty much different to like what you've done before or same do you know what it, every song's different so it's yeah. Uh, yeah yeah it's a bit different it's more yeah, like yeah. I'd say a bit, bit garagey a bit post-punky like vibes oh, I don't like know. That, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah it's hard to label it bro you know what I mean yeah 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 do you know any news on like when tracks will be out and stuff like that uh, we're looking hopefully uh, January February yeah, time yeah. Would it be our EP or album? Or? It's going to be an album, I think. Oh, right? cool, yeah, man. Yeah. Any plans for like, would it be on CD or vinyl? We're going to push it on vinyl, yeah. Oh, yeah. nice, man. Nice. I'm excited for that. We've got some good plans for that, yeah. Yeah. I love it when local bands like get on vinyl because like, I don't really play CD, man. Like, yeah, obsolete technology, you know, when it you know, yeah, you know, yeah. vinyl's like, it's like the same, but... Do you know what it is with CDs, though? They are good to release because everyone's got a fucking car right now and everyone's yeah, got a yeah, CD yeah. player, so it's like... Even if they don't just listen to it in the cars, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, well, I've got a Technique CD player, so that's, it's quite easy. brilliant on that, to be honest. Like, I, I, put, um, I use a Technique same player with, um, and record players like, plugged into it. Yeah, yeah, so like, yeah. the sound goes through that, and it's great sound, to be honest. So, I mean, Bamba tonight, who's DJing, he's DJing pure CDs. Yeah, oh, really? CD, CD, yeah, yeah, DJ. I, I, I like vinyl DJ, man. Like, yeah, to be fair, like, yeah. I couldn't, I, I get, like, if you have CDs, vinyl, and memory stick, right? so you got a bit of, everything yeah, what, yeah, go yeah. with what you feel yeah true like, with, that's how I would do it but like it has to be vinyl man vinyl is nice yeah it's yeah. a nice feeling ripping it out of the thing and yeah it yeah, yeah. And so like um, absolutely amazing oh thank you so I'm much I'm sure yeah, you know yeah. who you are but <laughs> what's your name sorry uh, my name's Sue nice to meet no, you sir there's four of us and we honestly never heard anything like it that, the whole range of stuff you do Brilliant. is just so some of the things you really like. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of covers I was doing, but then, like, yeah, man, thank you so much, too. Yeah, no, you, you can What's say... What's your name, brother? Simon. Nice to meet you, Simon. You can say it's what you really love, so keep with it, because it's just... Yeah. It, it, it's made a heart sink, totally. Do you know what? And you fucking made my heart sink now, so... <laughs> <laughs> See you in a bit, guys. Have a lovely night. Love shit like that, man. Yeah, it's cute. Um, I love that. So like with Brian Food, what was it like when you first ever recorded something together, and how? What was that feeling like recording? You know what, mate, it was wicked because obviously our, our boy Conor Doyle, he 
he was at uni at the time and he just like he was doing music at uni and he just had so much sick equipment and we just we just done it all ourselves and it like yeah, just sat yeah. there with a the MacBook and just fucking yeah. just recorded it all onto Logic and then oh, Logic and then he, and he processed it like you know mixed and mastered it like and that was the first one and then the second one we went and used Mark Gittins in uh in his studio at Mano- uh, um, Jubilee Centre. Yeah, 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 man. So, also another band I noticed you've been getting involved with Fitzroy Hall. So, like, do you want to talk a bit about that as well? Yeah, of course I can. Oh, so, Fitzroy Hall is the brainchild of uh, a good friend of mine called Connor Brooks. He's um, one of the most talented dudes I've ever met. Man, he's like a, an amazing tattoo artist, yeah. amazing artist, unreal musician. And um, our other pal, Tom Rhodes. Hmm. He used to do a band called the Nova, so he's playing with them, and um, he yeah. started that with them. Like he's one of the co-founders, and um, he was going on holiday, so they just messaged me saying, "Oh, do you want to play on the White Festival with us?" Yeah, I was yeah. like, right, "Of course I will." <laughs> and then obviously we smashed it, so he was like, "I want to be in the band now." Oh, cool! Man. And then obviously no, me and Tom are good friends, so it was like, "It just works, man. It's sick." Yeah, and then yeah. we got our pal Ed Quigley in it. Oh, the Wolverhampton own as well, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, yeah. Right. 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 They've done an in-store stylish records, and when there was herbals. Oh yeah, you man. remember that? That was cool. Yeah, yeah. Fucking yeah. hell, herbals were great, man. Really like, cool, bro. But like, I feel like Connor has a look as well, man. Yeah, mate. He's got a vibe. Of course, he has. He's yeah, fucking sexy yeah. bastard. Like my boss. <laughs> yeah, my boss said that. Like he says, he just has a look. You just know they're gonna be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. But, so, like, it's a good stuff plan with Victor. Right, yeah. Oh, any, are you gonna do anything else with them? Or? Yeah, we're just gonna record, and then we're putting out some tracks. We're playing in St Pancras Church in London. Oh, nice. On Halloween. Oh, I'm going to blast some Sabbath riffs and that, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> God is dead! <laughs> Blaspheme. Yeah, that's really, that'd be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about um, the events put on uh, the, the Night Owl and stuff like that. Like Kaleidoscope and that. So do you want to talk in depth about that? Yeah, yeah, so Kaleidoscope, that's again, that's a Conador coming through with his, uh, with his ideas. So Conador used to work here at the Night Owl. And we just thought, you know what, there's a bit of a gap in the market for like kind of psych nights. Yeah, yeah. So we just thought, he, he started the, the night up and then he got me, obviously was in Brain Food, we're in Brain Food together, so we got me and our other guitarist at the time, Jacob, to come and like help him with the with the events. And then he just moved to a point where like we're all just integral to the, 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 the night in Digwood, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So How long does it be going, by the way? Oh, okay. Do you know what? I always, I always uh, fuck up on this question, but <laughs> I think it's about three years, you know? Yeah, yeah. I think the first one was in 2018. Yeah, yeah. But it might have been 2017, to be fair. I feel like Kaleidoscope is much needed in Birmingham, like, because Psych Nights and stuff like that, like, it, I'm, I'm never really find them, to be honest. Like, it is a Psych Night. Or Psych Bands. Yeah, and stuff yeah. Like we that. tried to like, diversify it a bit, diversify it a bit yeah. more like a. Uh, well, Spits Milk last week was a yeah, bit different, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Like, we have heavy acts on and stuff. It's just yeah. kind of like giving up and coming artists a, a bit of a platform to kind yeah. of like make sure they're playing like a nice busy room, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, get, yeah, yeah. I really discovered glad. some great bands just going to the Kaleidoscope events. Like I loved Lost Sons, they were fucking great. Like. Wicked, mate. And Baby Wicked. Vanga, man, they were mate, brilliant. Baby Vanga are our absolute boys. Yeah, yeah. Like, so cool. I'm like interviewing the bands. Like, I try and interview the bands at every event, but like obviously work sometimes. Yeah, like, fair play you know, to you, bro. Yeah. I dig what you're doing, dude, because it's just like... You just need it, you know what I mean? It's yeah, nice passion yeah. for yeah, music man, and yeah, it's yeah. that sort of... There were people like you about, bro, look. Like, it wouldn't, you know what I mean, just stagnate and yeah. Yeah. So like, what came with, what was the name called I just got for the event? What's the camp? Well, I think, I don't know, you know, I think kind of, kind of come up with a name and it's, uh, obviously there's a few events called Kaleidoscope throughout the years. I don't know, I think it just fits. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's a bit trippy. I was that. thinking of like the band, the Kaleidoscope. But so we did look at that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking that's where you got it from and that. But also, um, a question I forgot to ask about brain food. Why the name brain food and where it came from? Uh, to be fair, again, Connor. <laughs> Connor's the catalyst dude. Do you know the story of it all? Uh, well, we was all sitting together and we were just thinking of a name. Like, we had no name at the time. The last name we had was Crop Circles, which was, yeah. uh, that was, Connor wasn't in that band, but... Uh, I don't know, we just, he just said it one day and I think, I think we just stuck mate, you know yeah. what I mean? I think, I, like, when I first came across the name Brian Food, like, I thought it was more of a, like, before hearing your stuff, I was expecting more punky stuff. Yeah, to be fair, we used to be a bit punky to be Oh fair. really, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. But, uh, but, like, the artwork as well, has that punk but psych vibe to it as well. True, I know what you're yeah, saying, that's, uh, yeah. that's Lewis Herriot, the first one that we've done with the Big Elephant, yeah. that's, uh, you might have seen him doing stuff like on This Is Tomorrow posters and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like, is there anything else like you like to add, like events-wise and stuff? Yes, yeah, like so obviously I do a thing called Night Surgic Lounge as well, where yeah. I book loads of international psych bands and just international bands on the touring uh, circuit. The next one I've got is 
it's from Wednesday the seventh, and um, that's a band called Glue Trip from Brazil. Oh, no. And uh, they're just out of this world, bro. Like proper tropical, yeah, like just psychedelic. I'm to find the opportunity to see, like, go to these, but like because they're weekday, man. Yeah, like, yeah. We've got really? Acid Mother's Temple on as well, which oh, is oh uh, man, one of the well, the birth of Japanese side like, Do you know what I mean? Like, there's a Japanese side band that was on air at the Hair and Owl. Yeah, that's like, with the, so that's yeah, with, uh, was it? so that's the same promoter. We're doing a co-promotion called yeah. Let's Go Live Surge at Lounge and then Kushukatsu Records, which is yeah, a yeah. lovely friend of ours called Alan. Yeah, yeah. I know she's doing some stuff at Norton's as well, like um, Yeah, so that's where Live Surge at Lounge is based at Norton's, mate. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's a good venue, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, I've uh, never been yet. Anyone who's listening to this, mate, make sure you go to Norton's because yeah, it's yeah. the best. <laughs> and they look like they do a, do a nice like, full Irish breakfast as well, man. To be fair, they do. They do. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they have chef sauce, which is like not many pubs and that. Chef sauce, all, man. all the like, snacks and confectionery are just pure Irish stuff, yeah, mate. So it's yeah. like potatoes, fucking. Have they got the white pudding, man? Yeah, we've got white pudding. Oh, white pudding. <laughs> yeah, 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 we've got all of that. Man, I love it. Well, I can't beat my nose. I don't eat all that, but you know what I'm saying? The thing is, murder and I ain't not make it. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck <laughs> Morrissey. Yeah, yeah, fuck <laughs> Morrissey. So, like, is there anything you like to add? Like, um, I mean, that band, that? yeah, so I'm in another band called Jackie FC. Oh, didn't you hear that? Yeah, yeah, so uh, we do like Trumpicalia type uh, garage fuzz, fucking freak out. But uh, we're, we're just having a little bit of a lineup change at the moment, so yeah, we've yeah. got a few new members in and stuff. It's, we're trying to aim to make it like as yeah, big yeah. as possible, like a massive collective of yeah, artists yeah. and musicians. So how do you like cope? We like being like in so many bands. <laughs> like, Mate, I've got about number three bands. Do you put in events on as well? Like you're Mate, busy, I'm man. Frazzled, I'm very frazzled. My <laughs> yeah. brain's a mess, but. Yeah. You know what? I love it. I'd rather, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad I'm doing it, man. Yeah. Like, I'm very lucky because when I was. So how old are you, Keller? I am 21. Yeah, so when I was your age, bro, I was kind of like, oh, what the fuck am I going to do? Like, yeah. But I'm gassed and doing it, you, you know should what I mean? Like, I feel like you should work with what you're passionate about. Yeah, like, yeah. Not like what you're not passionate about. Like, I used to work in hotels for years. Yeah. Right. It's like our parents telling me for like years, like grandparents going, oh, you should be a plumber or electrician like, and like Victorian that. Victorian ideals, yeah. bro. Like, I'm like, yeah, but I don't have a passion in that. I want to enjoy it as well as like. Exactly, yeah, bro. Yeah, Obviously, it. you've got to work in it, but. Yeah. You can do something that you love, that's the best way. Yeah, you know what I mean? definitely. That's why I work and do this at the side. Man, it's... Right, I hope it grows as well, and I can see it growing, bro. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Passion in it. It's yeah, sick, man. everything about it, bro. It's cool, later. Man. Cheers, man. So, like, um, is there any bands you like to recommend to the podcast? So, yeah. obviously, I don't know if you've already them, but Sawal Underground. Yeah. I'll cool. interview them, man. They're cool. Uh, Midnight Rodeo. Yeah. Um, super cool band as well. Uh, there's a few, do you know what mate, when it comes to fucking new bands and stuff, <laughs> my brain's a mess, but uh, there's a band called New Genia from uh, Italy, I mm. think they are, they're amazing. Uh, yeah. There's another band called Le Patrice from France, which I highly recommend everyone like, checking out. Um, for psych bands and stuff coming up, there's a band called the Kundalini Genie, yeah, from, yeah. Uh, it's a good friend of ours called Jordan Diggle, he mm. like, puts all these amazing bands on in Manchester, he does Happy Days records, it's like... It's really good, man. You should check it out. Oh man, I'll check them out, man. There's a band yeah. called the Mosley Hillabillies as well from Liverpool. I, I love the names, man. Like, yeah, yeah. Brilliant check names. them out, man. Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, have you got anything inspiring to say to the listeners before you go? Never give up your dreams, dogs. <laughs> uh, you chose books, I chose looks. <laughs> um, do you know what? Just, I don't know, do what you love, innit? Do you, like? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean,. Music is my life, dog. <laughs> no, I don't mean that. I'm, not, I'm shit for inspirational shit, mate. Yeah, yeah. Same, man. But I'll just drop that one. Yeah, just, I don't know, just fucking pick up a guitar, innit? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's one question I love to drop on the band, man. Mm. But um, thanks for like, joining me for the podcast and um, see you about. And I'm sure looking. I'll see you again, Callum, mate. Yeah, definitely, man. Yeah, yeah. Cheers yeah. for always recommending Kaleidoscope, bro. Like, yeah, always man. tagging us and being just on it on the socials. No right? problem, mate. No problem. Like, anytime as well. So see you later. Cheers, man. Take care. <laughs>
Podcast and today I'm with the Die Breakers. Can you say hello? Hello. Hello. Hi. Do you all want to say your name? What you play in the band? Yeah. <laughs> Connor Cotter, I play bass. Max Revel, I play drums. Aiden Connell, play guitar. So, like, you just played at the Night Owl, like the Owl Stock 2022 gig, and um, you was doing performing the Muddy Waters Electric. So, like, how was that for you guys? Like. Yeah, it was cool. Like uh, we played like three tracks and that, and then just did our own stuff. Yeah. It's quite quite clever. You like mix the music with like the Morty Water stuff. How did you do that? Like we play that kind of music anyway. Like yeah. that's like a touchstone for the type of music we play. Yeah, because yeah. I guess it's more it's bluesier than like Hendrix. So it's like you don't want to. I mean, it, much respect to the next guys who are playing. It's Hendrix like tribute act, but yeah. obviously we're not a tribute act. Yeah. But that is a touchstone for the type of music yeah, we play. Yeah. You know? So, like, I guess you're like all Muddy Waters fan and stuff oh, yeah. like. That. What's like your main blues band or musician that you really like? Is it Muddy Waters or have you got other? Uh, yeah, for me, I think it's Muddy Muddy Waters and Levon Helms a big yeah, one for me, yeah, and they, they yeah. play together a lot. Yeah, yeah. Or used to. So yeah, I think Levon Helms a big one for me, yeah, yeah. and he's Americana blues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what about you? I said Muddy Waters. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, yeah. Abba King, you know, all those, like, yeah, all yeah, those yeah. guys. And yeah. Walter from me, probably. Oh, yeah. Because he's a bad guy, guy like yeah. me. I like Sonny Boy Williamson, <laughs> no, I do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and Robert Johnson, obviously, yeah. like, yeah. the legend. Like, for me, that's the guy who started it all, man. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. And apart from Charlie Patton. You are? Apart from Charlie Patton. Yeah. So I think his recordings were like what, 1922? Yeah, yeah. I think um, Robert Johnson was like 30s. Yeah, 20, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I like also the Howling Wolf, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's, there's so many. There's yeah, so many. there's too many, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. So like Johnny Guitar Watson. I was yeah. listening to him the other day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so like, um, how long have you been together as a band? Then? Uh, yeah, we 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 formed this just before lockdown, and it was kind of Connor and my thing, and then like we expanded it into a band, and then Max started playing drums about like a month ago. Yeah, yeah, about, about a month ago. Gig, so. Yeah, yeah, it's like his fourth show or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. How was that for you, like? Yeah, it's all right. I'm I'm pretty used to doing gigs by the seat of my pants type yeah. thing. Um, so yeah, I just watch uh, Aiden and yeah. kind of look confused a little bit, yeah. you know. <laughs> but everyone seemed to enjoy it, yeah. so it's all right. So what was the main motivation to form a band? What the blues band like? Because uh, there's loads of blues solo artists, but they don't really. There's no real like bands playing blues. Yeah, like, yeah. Not like I mean, there's the Blues Brothers, I suppose, yeah. or, or what. But like you know, it's very like. In London, there's a lot of blues singer-songwriters, but they kind of... I mean, it, it's great what they're doing, but it's like we're really about pushing the boundaries of blues music. Yeah. You know, because with a lot of rock music, even though we're pretty much a rock and roll band, it's like a lot of people forget about the roots of rock and roll, which yeah, is yeah. blues. Yeah. So how did you all like get into like blues and, like when you were younger and stuff like that? Uh, well, for me, it was just... I just used to go to blues jams because that seems to be the thing when when there's a jam it ten, tends to be around blues and I just wanted to go out and play music with people and then it just the genre was blues yeah, yeah. so then I just started to play a lot of blues yeah, yeah, yeah. and it just went from there yeah, yeah. what about you guys like uh, all my favorite bands growing up were like Zeppelin, Cream, yeah, yeah. Was that like what you grew up stuff. with and stuff like that? Yeah, kind of pretty much. And then from there, it kind of just went backwards. So yeah. it was Zeppelin, then you get like Howlin' Wolf. Yeah, yeah. You go know, Robert Johnson, obviously. It kind of went backwards you, from there. Like so then, dig, like yeah, basically like, yeah, dig yeah, deeper and stuff like that. that. So like, who, who was it that introduced you all to like blues and that in your life? Like? Um, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's my change. Sorry, not change. Uh, yeah, I can't remember a particular moment where it was, because it's also like you say, like Zeppelin and stuff, and it kind of just evolves. It was maybe maybe Mojo Jack magazine, White. I think maybe when I was Mojo Magazine, Mojo Magazine as well. Brilliant man, well. brilliant. It's probably Jack White for me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. When I was about fourteen, the Raconteurs came out, and I, you know, that's kind of got into that, and then learned that Jack White was inspired by the blues so check that out I think maybe that was it yeah cool man so like what, what was your most recent release before, like, have you got anything on Spotify or anything like that or we've got a bunch of records and we recorded some stuff in the studio the other day so we might put out something next week I don't know if these guys like the tempo of it yet so, <laughs> so like <laughs> what? so like what is it what is all of it about like lyrically and stuff like that like? um well, the like we write all the music together, yeah. like, and usually I do the lyrics because I don't know if anyone's a lyricist here, but uh, I am kind of a lyricist. But yeah, we usually just have a few motifs and then jab out a little bit and form a song structure. How would you say you developed over the years of like doing gigs and shit like that? Well, the weeks or whatever. Like, well, I guess like you know everyone grows up like you play guitar or drums and you want to be a rock musician but then you kind of have to enrich your palette with other music you know so it can be blues it can be jazz it can be afrobeat yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. so probably for me it's more that because i was just a massive fan of like deep purple and like van halen or yeah, like yeah. heavy rock bands uh, have you got anything upcoming gig wise so far uh, yeah, we're playing on Thursday in the Night Owl in London. Oh, cool. And any other dates or of gigs? Yeah, we're playing uh, the 7th in Sheffield. The, uh, no, no, 7th in Edinburgh. The, the 8th in Sheffield. Croydon and Guildford we're playing as well. So all the showbiz places, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the hot spots. They showbiz. <laughs> the question I forgot to ask earlier, for some reason I forgot about you with the last band. Um, with the name Daybreakers, like, who came up with that and why that name? Well, I just sent Connor a bunch of names. Yeah. And I think there's a band, like, garage band who recorded, like, three songs called The Daybreakers. 
Whereas also it's from like a Maya Angelou poem, so. That's what I've been told. <laughs> so like, um, yeah, but he said like some of my names were shit. So. Oh really? <laughs> so like, when did you all agree with Dave Rakers? When did you confirm that was the name? Like, probably just before lockdown. I yeah, know, yeah. Um, so like, um, have you got anything to add? Like that we didn't talk about stuff like that. Uh, not unprompted. Mm. Why so, is there no cobs or baps here? You are. Why is there no cobs or baps here? Oh, as no, a yeah, menu? yeah. Bloody Birmingham, um, mate. <laughs> with the thick cut cheese. Yeah. In, well, if you went down Wolverhampton, you get like cobs, like with the, with the pretty much like the black bun, really. <laughs> <laughs> like, I really. Oh, that's the way I like it, man. And warm them up. Put your butter on. <laughs> <laughs> And onions, you need onions on yeah, it, man. Thick yeah. onion as well, resting on top. Oh, yeah. And I'm pork scratchings. Have... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> the black it's country. The most black country thing to have. Yeah. And a pint, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool, man. So, like, um, have you got any bands you'd like to recommend, shout out, or anything like that? Um, who do we shout out? Ginelli Brothers? Chanelli's. There's a band called the Cobras of the K. Yeah, pretty good. That's that thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good. definitely, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they need a bit of promo. They need a bit. Pretty, of pretty good band. Pretty local to us, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, and also, the last question: Have you got anything inspiring to say to the listeners? Uh, there is hope. <laughs> uh, yeah. What about you guys? What? I, I'm not, I know, I was going to say your mum, but then... <laughs> keep on keeping on. Yeah, keep on yeah. Keeping I, think, on. I think someone said that as well. <laughs> your mum? Oh, um, no, keep on keeping uh, on. <laughs> sweet potato pie. Sweet potato pie. <laughs> but, um, thanks for doing the interview. Yeah, no problem, that's right. And see you soon, and yeah. I hope you have a good gig at the Night Owl yeah, in London. Yeah, Take nice care, man. Cheers. Nice yeah, one. Thank you, thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks for watching the podcast um, or listening. Um, what a great event Owlstock was. Really enjoyed it and cannot wait for next year's Owlstock. Um, I really look forward to it and I'll be happy to do another Owlstock special for crashing in. Um, now I'm going to play some highlights before I go. Take care. Please leave a like and subscribe and share. Please share. Thank you very much, people, and thank you to the bands, Mazzy and Ross, and the Night Owl. i